consumer first alert this morning. We're talking about identity theft and mental health. It can be so devastating and there's 25 pages here in this new consumer impact report. I've been looking through this and listen to this. Identity theft becomes such a stressful situation that 16% of victims consider taking their life rather than trying to recover from it. This is a, a new study by the Identity Theft Resource Center. Listen to what people are telling them. They say it has devastated my family. I divorced my husband. I've been in therapy for over a year trying to get a better handle on how this happened and how to prevent it again. Another person says, I do everything differently. This is a terrifying hell. If you're a victim, I really want to make this very clear. Please, please, please do not be ashamed or embarrassed. There is a, a lot of shame and embarrassment that goes along with this and there is no cost help available to you. So please don't be discouraged. Believe me, you can get the help that you need. Ending your life is not an option. I talked with the president and CEO of the National Nonprofit Identity Theft Resource Center, Eva Velasquez, says for 20 years they've been tracking the impact of identity crimes. And this year was a new high of victims who say that they contacted their organization who say they considered suicide as a result of having their identities misused. And it is Suicide Awareness Month. Help is available 24 hours a day. We want to share the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. That is 988, simple number there to call to get help. And as far as identity theft goes, the Identity Theft Resource Center has free help. You heard Eva say that their staff is really helpful to walk you through steps what to do, or if you have just any questions about this, we have these resources listed for you at wbay.com slash links. All right, I take a moment.